Welcome to episode 12 of Book Nerd Paradise, where we get to know an author as they tell us one of their favorite quotes, read from their work, pose a trivia question, and give away a book or two. Hi, I'm L.R.W. Lee, author of the Andy Smithson Epic Fantasy Adventure Series. As always, the ebook of book one is available for free download on Amazon, so if you haven't done so already, please get yourself a copy. Today we welcome YA fantasy author Nicole Lykin as our guest. Nicole wrote her first book at age 13 and has never stopped. She's the author of nine published books for young adults, including Violet Eyes, its sequels, and more. Nicole has the distinction of being Booker Paradise's first international author, for she lives with her family in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. She says it's physically impossible for her to go more than three days in a row without writing. Hmm, sounds like a problem. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, it's nice to be here. Let's start this episode with a giveaway. Nicole, what will you be giving away to our listeners? I will be giving away a rare, hard-to-find copy of uh, The Catalyst, which is an earlier book of mine. It's not the book I'm going to be reading from today. It's about uh, a girl named Medusa Noir, who is not only as ugly as her name implies, but also has some psychic powers. Hmm, that sounds pretty interesting. Okay, well, I guess we'll get a taste of what that book may be like when you get yours today. Awesome. To enter to win this book, be sure to leave a comment on YouTube uh, with the episode. You'll be entered to win a random drawing, and we'll decide who the winner is. So, Nicole, you'll be reading through Fire and Sea. Would you give us a brief synopsis? My YA fantasy, Through Fire and Sea, is a tale of parallel worlds. There is the true world, and then there are four mirror worlds. Each mirror world is kind of a copy of the true world, but it's also associated with a different element. So air, fire, water, and stone. As you can probably tell from the title, Through Fire and, and Sea concerns fire world and water world. Now, water world is just our own earth because, of course, the earth is both covered mostly with ocean. But fire world is more of a medieval fantasy world. It has volcano lords and uh, the hot-blooded nobility who have the magical ability to communicate with the volcano lords and keep them from erupting everywhere. And it also has dragons. In fact, the story starts off when a dragon attacks the castle. A 17-year-old Leah is my main character. She's the illegitimate daughter of the Duke, and her whole life she's wanted to just attract her dad's attention and maybe get a small dowry settled on her to save her from a life of servitude. And she does get his attention, but not in a good way. You see, in order to drive off the dragon, the Duke has to make a deal with a sorceress named Katara. And part of the deal is for him and to foster his daughter with her. But he doesn't want to give up his real daughter to Hannah, and so he decides to send Leah in her place as an imposter. And Leah is forced to spy on Katura. At Katura's tower, Leah finds out that she is a rare caller, one of the rare people who have the magical ability to uh, contact their other selves, who help for the mirror worlds. And so then she contacts Holly, who is her, her other self from Water World, our world. And the two girls find out that there's Katura is planning, has an evil plan to shatter the water, the mirror world, and uh, they have to try to stop her. Well, that sounds like a very interesting tale to me. Hmm, I can't wait to hear the portion you'll read. You've selected a favorite quote. What is it, and why is it a favorite? Uh, it, it's a quote from Groucho Marx. It's, outside of a dog, a book is a man's best friend. Inside of a dog, it's too dark to read. So I like this quote, uh, of course, because it's humorous. I, I like the, the funniness. But also because it really speaks to the bookworm in me. I am definitely one of those people 
always brings a book with me wherever I go in case I can edge in a little reading time somewhere. Very good. Yeah, I happen to like that quote too. It's, it's pretty funny. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> So you're going to be reading a portion of Through Fire and Sea. Would you briefly set up the portion you're going to read and then go ahead and share? Um, I'm just starting off actually right away with chapter one, so there's not a lot of setup. It's chapter one is titled The Duke. Two men-at-arms threw Leah trembling at Duke Reuben's feet. She risked one terrified glance up, but gleaned no clues to her crime from the Duke's grim mouth, crooked nose, and black eyebrows. She stared blindly down at the polished floor of his private study. The castle folk counted themselves lucky in their duke because Rumbling Man, the volcano lord of their valley, listened to him. But Duke Reuben also had a reputation as a hard man. Leah's mother often warned her to avoid him. Did he know, she wondered, not for the first time. Did he have any idea who Leah was? The senior man-at-arms cleared his throat, his red sideburns bristling. The weaver's daughter, my lord. He must know then. There was no reason to ask for the weaver's daughter unless he remembered their long ago liaison and knew that the weaver had borne him a child. Heart fluttering in wild hope, Leah raised her eyes, but the duke ignored her and walked over to his desk. He made an austere figure as he pressed his seal to a lump of wax. He handed the paper to the old man. Make haste and deliver this to Lady Katura. Yes, my lord. Bowing smartly, the man left. Send Duchess Judith to me. The Duke waved a hand, and the second man at arms backed out of the room, leaving Leah alone with her father. She looked down again. Black boots moved into her field of vision, and then Duke Reuben tilted her face up. Leah stared fixedly at the piece of red sky visible through the window. He grunted. You do resemble me. The question is, does your blood run hot or cold? Leah didn't know how to answer. For years, she'd urged her mother to tell the Duke about her, had dreamed of him settling a small dowry on her. But this was not the warm reception she'd imagined. Her knees ached, but she dared not rise without permission. Look at me. Leah forced herself to break the training of a lifetime and meet the Duke's fierce eyes. A contemptuous smile quirked his lips. Tell me, what is the name of our volcano lord? The Grumbling Man, Leah said after a pause. Every child knew that. Their valley was named after the volcano, and Reuben's folk of Grumbling Man. Crouching down, the Duke placed the tip of his ducal seal inside the grate set into the floor over the hypocaust, through which heat from the volcano's underground vents, the murmured word, flames, leaped. He picked up the now glowing orange seal by the wooden handle. He brought the metal so close to her face, the heat seared her skin. Leah pulled away, but he stood on a fold of her skirt, trapping her. Let's try again, shall we? He said pleasantly. What is the name of our volcano lord? Her heartbeat tripped faster. The, the grumbling man. She didn't understand the question. No, the Duke said with awful patience. Not the name all call him by, his secret name. I don't know. Her breathing grew ragged as she tugged at her skirt. Hold still. Tell me his secret name. Or I'll put out your eye. Leah stilled. She'd never heard of a secret name, but if one existed, it was surely dangerous. Knowledge that a lowly serving maid shouldn't admit to knowing. One? I don't know. Oh, Leah said again. He lifted one sardonic eyebrow. How unfortunate. Two? Her stomach to blind her. The fact that she was his daughter meant nothing to her. He rotated the seal. Three. Isaiah! Leah blurted her secret name for the volcano, then threw her body sideways, wrenching her skirt free. She rolled onto her hands and knees, tense to run. The Duke calmly set the seal on hypocaust great triumph in his eyes. The name she'd fancy the volcano lord had whispered to her in the darkness of the night must to be correct. Her throat tightened. She had a terrible premonition that the Duke wanted something dangerous from her. It might have been better to keep denying her knowledge and merely lose an eye. Well, daughter, at least you're not a screamer. 
Leah glared at him. My name is Leah. Not anymore. Your name will be Johanna. And I think I'll just leave it there. Hmm, that sounds very interesting. I wonder what happens next. So our guest author last week, YA fantasy author Morgan Wiley, posed a trivia question to us. So I asked, in the movie The NeverEnding Story, what is the name of the luck dragon? And the answer is, dun dun dun, Falcor. Nicole, you have a trivia question for us. What is it? Well, as a kid, I really liked reading the Oz series by L. Frank Baum. So my question is, what are the four lands of Oz, the ones that surround the Emerald City? Ooh, that's an awesome question. I'm sure lots of people will have some ideas on that one. Be sure to tune in next episode when Nicole reveals the answer to this trivia conundrum. Nicole, any final thoughts you'd like to leave with our listeners? My advice to young writers is to read a lot and to write a lot. I wrote my first book when I was 13 by trying to write uh, for one hour every day. It usually took me that long to write a page, but even at that slow rate, you can uh, turn out a novel. Very good. No, that's great. Yes, I think perseverance definitely is the key when it comes to writing. Well said. Well said. I hope you've enjoyed getting to know YA fantasy author Nicole Lykin. I'm LRW Lee, author of the Andy Smith's and Epic Fantasy Adventure series. The first book, Last of the Dragon's Fury, is available for download on Amazon, so be sure to get your copy. Our guest for next episode will be YA fantasy author Tricia Stewart Shu. She's the author of the MOA series, which has been summarized as follows. For almost 200 years, Moa, an ancient Hawaiian spirit, has tried to solve the mystery surrounding her parents' senseless murder, and she's running out of time. She and her entire lineage will perish if they do not find human aid. An energetic 18-year-old, Hilary Haas, has no idea that she holds the key to this centuries-old secret. With the help of her older sister, Molly, and Heidi, her 7-year-old niece, Hillary embarks on a journey determined to save herself, her family, Moa, and the Hawaiian Islands. I'm looking forward to hearing more about this one. Hey, I'm sure you might be too. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you've enjoyed today's books, and I look forward to seeing you again next episode. Click the button to subscribe to the Book Nerd Paradise YouTube channel so you don't miss upcoming authors, giveaways, and answers to trivia questions.